Now let's talk about Ethiopia. It's under a state of emergency. A year-long conflict between the government and a rebel group is escalating. The government's telling people in the capital to take up arms. And the assessment of the UN is stark. We have seen all kinds of violations like extrajudicial killings, uh, gender-based violence, rape, massive rapes, uh, uh, arbitrary detention and, and, of course, torture, ill-treatment. Well, let me take you through this story from the start, from 2018. That was when Abiy Ahmed became prime minister and he didn't just take the top job. Once he'd done that, he pushed a number of powerful groups out of government and in doing so, made a lot of enemies. One of the main losers in that shift was the Tigray People's Liberation Front, or the TPLF. Now, Tigray is a region in the north. It's large, home to about 7 million people. And having been pushed out of the central government, the TPLF began demanding greater autonomy for its region. And it had thousands of fighters to back up those claims. Then in November 2020, the government acted. It declared war on the TPLF, accusing it of having attacked a government military base. And at the time, this is what the Prime Minister was saying. Their objective was clear, to make the country ungovernable by instigating clashes along ethnic and religious lines. Initially, the Tigray forces were beaten back, but the conflict wasn't over. These pictures are from July this year. The rebels were back in control of their regional capital, Michele. October, though, brought two important developments. The government launched new airstrikes and deployed thousands more troops. And that was connected in part because the conflict was spreading outside of Tigray. And that's continued. Rebels have seized parts of neighboring Amhara and Afar states, including two important towns. They're also threatening a town just over 300 kilometers from the capital, Addis Ababa. The reason why the rebels are doing this is explained by this Tigrayan commentator. They have uh, stated their goals. Uh, the, one of them is to break the siege on Tigray, and you can't do that without uh, reaching Addis. The thinking is this. The rebels believe their only way of gaining greater autonomy is by removing the national government. They will, of course, be aware that a new government may offer them far more national power too. And so Addis Ababa is the focus, home to the Ethiopian government, home to the headquarters of the African Union, home to five million people who are now being told by their prime minister to use every weapon and power to prevent, reverse and bury the terrorist TPLF. That's right, the government's asking civilians to be prepared to join the fight. Some are prepared to. I am young. I'll participate in the war in whatever way young people can. I'm planning to head to the front line. TPLF, though, is scathing about the government and its state of emergency. A spokesperson has said it's a carte blanche to jail or kill Tigrayans at will. While the regime is teetering on the brinks of collapse, Abiy and his lieutenants are unleashing a reign of terror with a vengeance. And as if this weren't all serious enough, the conflict is evolving. Go back to 2018 again, the Tigrayans weren't the only ones who were pushed from the centre of power by the Prime Minister. And they're now not the only ones who are still upset about that. In September, rebels from Ethiopia's biggest ethnic group, the Oromo, joined forces with the Tigrayans. These rebels have a stated goal, to bring down the government. And both groups are now sitting north of the capital. That has changed the military equation. The Tigray People's Liberation Front, along with the now allied forces from the Oromo Liberation Army, claim to have captured uh, cities that are of strategic importance, which are also the furthest southern forward positions that the rebels have ever held since the beginning of the conflict. And while they're there, this is the calculation for these rebels as they consider whether to move on the capital. The two groups are seeing themselves as fighting against their adversary, which is Prime Minister Abiy. Taking the capital would mean a way to assert their authority and power. And this way, by marching to Addis, they would be able to prove that point. The rebels now have a decision to make, and the U.S. is urging them not to attack the capital and risk a humanitarian crisis. Bear in mind, already the U.N. estimates 400,000 people are living in famine-like conditions in Tigray. Another 4.8 million people need urgent assistance. And as the conflict spreads beyond Tigray, so too will it drive people from their homes in other parts of Ethiopia, which is why the U.N. is making this call. I think it's the time for all parties to sit, to think and, and work together. Um, and I think the international community has to help those efforts so, so peace could be brought to, to, to Ethiopia.
For the moment, though, there's no sitting and thinking and working together. Of the rebels, one analyst writes, like Abby before, they exhibit little willingness to undertake compromise negotiations because as this conflict escalates, so too does the language. Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed's a Nobel Peace Prize winner. This is how he speaks now. This pit, which is dug very deep, will be where the enemy will be buried, not where Ethiopia disintegrates. We will bury this enemy with our blood and bones and make the glory of Ethiopia high up again. The glory of Ethiopia may in time be high up again. But right now, these are perilous days for the country and for the people of Addis Ababa. They want to see if a way can be found to avoid their city hosting this conflict. That, though, will require the government and the rebels choosing to de-escalate. The last year will have taught them not to expect that. Well, the U.S. Special Envoy for the Horn of Africa has announced he's travelling to Ethiopia on Thursday. Uh, Beverly Ocheng from BBC Monitoring often helps us on this story. She's back with us here on Outside Source. Beverly, help me understand this U.S. intervention. Might that shift the situation? It seems from the rhetoric that is coming out, and even if you think about Prime Minister Abiy's address today when they were commemorating one year, there is a small chance of this de-escalation. As long as there seems to be a threat to Addis, to the political class, as long as there's this mobilization, not just in Addis Ababa, but even the neighboring states, there's a very slim chance for there to be meaningful dialogue between the parties that are warring and that the tensions are escalating southwards into Addis Ababa. And in terms of a possible attack on Addis Ababa, are either of the two rebel groups saying whether they are considering this? So OLF Shene has stated quite clearly that it does want to take Addis Ababa, that its goal and initiative is to remove Prime Minister Abiy from power. The TPLF has been hedging its commentary around whether it does intend to go into Addis Ababa together with the OLF, even though they have forged an alliance. And part of this could do with strategy and the jostling that is likely to come on afterwards. Of course, the TPLF has spent, since 2018, when Abiy came into power, undermining some of the elements that Abiy was trying to reform politically and socially. There was antagonism between the two parties. But whether this will lead to an ousting of the, of, the, of the government in Addis Ababa, it's not quite clear, at least on their part. And can you help those of us who haven't followed every in and out of the story? What is the justification of the TPLF and the Oromo group of attacking an elected government, a government which has the support of the electorate of Ethiopia? So it also goes back to how the elections were held and the political antagonism that was taking place throughout the period that Abiy has been in power. When he came to power, there was allegations that he had been purging a lot of allies of the TPLF from the government as part of his reform policy. There was the rapprochement with Eritrea, which led to some discomfort because there was that long-term border war that had taken place that had been blamed on the TPLF administration when it was in power for nearly three decades. The OLF Shene, even though they had come back and there was a peace agreement, the more militant members of OLF decided that they would still go back and wage a war against the government. They have fought against being included in the government. The election itself that took place this year excluded a big number of the opposition and they did not feel themselves as fitting into the vision that Prime Minister Abiy had of Ethiopia politically and socially.